Today on Scroll Broadcast, Tori gives us a recap on the fun events that happened on date night. Then, Lauren goes to the crossroads to ask students about their favorite things about Rexburg on Crossroad Connections. After that, we'll join Jorge as he goes to the ASL program and gives us an exciting look into the American Sign Language world on iTry. Hello and welcome to Scroll Broadcast, a BYU-Idaho news show. We are so excited to be your host. I'm Cecily Walker. And I'm Jeremy Crumbo. Stay tuned for this week's news and exciting updates. I can tell you that we've got a fun season ahead of us. Is that so? Well, in the meantime, maybe you could tell me the directions to the ASL program. Well, no, that's more of Jorge's department. In that case, let's join Jorge as he tells us a bit more about the American Sign Language on this week's I Try. Thank you guys. My name is Jorge Cervantes and we are here at the ISO Club for I Try, where we do not only learn how to communicate, but we can find our eternal companion. Teaching at the Hinckley Building every Tuesday at 7 p.m., Hunter is pleased to see people coming to the class. And it's another language. Uh, Just like Spanish, English, Arsal, another language to learn, pick up, be able to communicate with deaf people. You know like the game where you play, where you act up stuff? Arso is pretty much like that. Like, just smooth, expressive, you understand where it's so much better. ASL provides a visual mode of communication that can help people with hearing loss understand the meaning of different phrases and words even if they cannot hear the sounds. People that come, just like, I'll be like mad tired before I come to teach us or class. By the minute, I just see more and more people come. It feels great. People want to learn our language. It just feels amazing. So if you guys are available on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m., please come join us. Back to you guys. Okay, so I think this is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it looks pretty good if you're trying out for Spider-Man. Ha ha. But that's a problem for another day, because we got some church and local news with Candy. Over to you, Candy. Welcome back to What's Popping in EI. That means Eastern Idaho. My name is Candy Zilale, and let's get right into the news. The Idaho Department of Education is accepting nominations for the 2025 Idaho Teacher of the Year. Nominations opened on Monday and will close on Monday, March 18th. Nominated educators will be notified on Friday, March 22nd, and their applications will be due by Monday, May 20th. The winning educator will receive $10,000, travel across the state to visit with other educators, legislators, and policymakers about curriculum, practices, teaching, and more. The 2025 Idaho Teacher of the Year will also represent Idaho as the nominee for the National Teacher of the Year. For more information, or if you want to make a nomination, visit sde.idaho.gov. Idaho Club will hold the Snake River Ice Gala in March. On Friday, March 8th at 7 p.m., the Idaho Falls Skating Club will hold the gala in the Hero Arena at the Mountain America Center. Local ice skaters will perform alongside Mariah Bell, the Olympian and U.S. National Champion. Bell is best known for her free skate to Katie Lang's rendition of Hallelujah. And at 25, she became the oldest ice skater in 95 years to capture the women's title and secured a spot on the U.S. Olympic team headed to Beijing. All funds will go towards practices, shows, competitions, and bringing guest skaters. Tickets are now on sale for $15 and can be found on Ticketmaster.com or you can get them in person at the venue Bingham Healthcare box office during their open hours. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints' seminaries and institutes of religion is pleased to announce their life preparation lessons. The church says these enriched seminary lessons are a response to the evolving needs of today's youth. The addition will help students draw on the power of Jesus Christ in all aspects of life while maintaining a foundation in scripture and in alignment with the Face Come Follow Me gospel study resources. Elder Clark G. Gilbert, the commissioner of the church education says, the key is to provide life preparation resources that are anchored in Jesus Christ and grounded in the scriptures. 
We would be missing the mark if life lessons on emotional resilience and college preparation fail to teach students to involve their Lord in their learning. Thanks for tuning in this week. I'll catch you guys right back here, same time next week. Thanks, Candy. Next, we've got announcements with Colin. I wonder what exciting upcoming events he has for us this week. To you, Colin. Thank you for that in the studio. Hi, I'm Colin Prisbury, and we'll be doing some announce for this, announcements for this week. Weather's warming up a little bit, so let's walk through those. Coming up this week with art and culture, we have the Mikado being with continuing performance on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, the performances are at 7.30 p.m. here at the Snow Building, and on Saturday, it's gonna be at 2 p.m. The Mikado is the, it's a pop culture, 21st century retelling of Gilbert and Sullivan's classic uh, social satire. It features a wedding singer crashing a corporate re retreat looking for lost love in a world where flirting is a capital offense. And on to the next. Still thirsting for adventure? This Saturday, join your friends on a snowmobiling safari. You'll ride a giant snowmobile through the Lions Creek area and then get to go on a beautiful snowshoeing hike. The snowshoes are provided, but make sure to bundle up and bring some water and food just so you don't stay, don't get dehydrated. Feeling something a little more active? Come down to the Heart Auditorium this Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. For just $3 a ticket, we're having the Slam Dunk Competition. For prizes for fans and participants include jerseys, AirPods, basketballs, and food vouchers. Don't lay up in your room and miss this. Come and slam down on the Heart Auditorium Gym. Finally, for anyone looking for something to do this Saturday night, we have plenty of activities. Either go alone, bring a date, or go with a group. We got several activities. First, you can head over to the Mac Lab from 6 to 7 or 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. and do the Hearts and Crafts Lab. Bring a date and enjoy the beauty of 3D modeling and, and 3D printing. Next, you can also show up, bring your roommates, bring your friends, come to Escape Night at the MC from 7 to 11. Lastly, you can cap the night off with a few laughs from Comic Frenzy. It's going to be in Snow Lab 105 from 9 to 10.30 p.m. Enjoy it. Can't wait to see you guys there. And back to you in the studio. Thanks, Colin. Wow, who knew the school had so many cool options? I mean, I did. But if you want a cool scoop, we'll talk about this week's devotional and ice cream social. Devo is pretty cool, and the speakers always have something wise to say, like do your homework or go to bed at a decent time. Wait, didn't you already do that? Ah, uh, no. And now we go to this week's Devo with Bia. Thank you so much. I'm Via Matos, and I am doing today's uh, Devo recap for this week. Um, after an inspiring and beautiful performance by the men's choir of Call to Serve, we got to hear from Brother Powell, who is an uh, animal and food science uh, professor here at BYUI. He's originally from Rexburg, and he graduated from Ricks College, and has been working here at the school since 2001. His talk was mainly about spiritual growth and how important it is to not only nourish our physical selves, but how sometimes we forget about our spiritual selves as well and how um, it's really important to read the scriptures, pray, and do all you can to um, bring yourself closer to God. Um, so we're just going to go and talk to some students and see what they had to think about the subject. Hi, I am here with uh, Casey and Addie, and they're just going to talk really quickly about some of their favorite parts of devotional. So what did you guys think about it? What stood out to you today? Uh, I really loved when he talked about how we all have that potential to become like gods and especially at this point in our lives when we're so imperfect and just trying to grow, that's a really encouraging thought. I really liked how he talked a lot about agriculture and animals and my dad's a veterinarian and so I related a lot to some of that stuff and so I thought it was really cool how he connected it all to the gospel. All right, and I'm here with Jensen and Emily and here are their thoughts on today's devotional. Um, I really appreciated the devotional today. I loved how he talked about the importance of starting families. We're going to have our little boy here next month, so I thought it was really applicable um, and just gave me some great things to ponder on as we're anticipating that. So. I also liked what he shared about uh, the, the cell, the cow, the, the bundle of cells, and what the cow will eventually become producing up to 3,000 gallons of milk annually in just a short three years of growth. All right, I'm here with Connor, and here are his thoughts on today's devotional. Um, I really liked it. I thought, um, I'm studying science myself, and so it was really cool how he compared like our beginning to cells to our divine potential. 
And this just really related to me that we can start from something small and then become something amazing through God. And it just really stood out to me. All right, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Well, that's all that I have for today's Devo recap. It's time for me to enjoy this ice cream. Back to you guys in the studio. That was such a cool message. And the free ice cream didn't hurt either. Speaking of which, Jeremy, what's your favorite ice cream? I gotta say anything with cheesecake in it, that's my kryptonite. What about you? Being an Idaho girl, I love Huckleberry. That's a good choice. But don't you think it's kind of too cold for ice cream? It's never too cold for ice cream. But speaking of the cold, we have Lauren who's asking our fellow students what their favorite part of Rexburg is. See you in the crossroads. Thanks guys and welcome to Crossroad Connections, BYU Scroll Broadcasting's most social segment. Come along as we learn more about the Rexburg area and the BYUI student body. Let's do it. Hello everybody and welcome to Crossroad Connections. I'm here with Freeman and we've got some questions today about Rexburg. All right, Freeman, my first question for you is, what is the most underrated thing about Rexburg? Probably it's music scene. There are a lot of like really good bands out there and uh, you should go see one of their concerts sometime. That is so true, that is so true. Um, I feel like a common thing I hear is that there's nothing to do in Rexburg, but I feel like there's always something. There's the sand dunes, Mesa Falls, and the school does a really good job of also putting on a lot of activities to keep you busy and doing things. I honestly would say the people. Um, the people are really cool here and I, I think people forget that. The beauty of the main street. It has that old style that it just captures a lot of beauty. I think the most underrated thing about Rexburg, probably the bowling alley. Honestly, the warped lanes are wonderful. What is your go-to activity on a Friday night? Um, I feel like randomly, more often than not, I'm like, hey, honey, let's go get a soda. So we go to Soda Vine and bring it back home to binge watch our TV show. Probably jamming out with my band. Funny enough, I'd also say bowling. Watch movies with friends, play video games sometimes. I'm gonna have to go with laser tag, man. Shout out. What is something that Rexburg needs? Um, I really think Rexburg needs more opportunities for internships. A target, not in Idaho Falls, but in Rexburg. Yep. Raising canes, 100%. A warm weather. <laughs> so true, so true. And there you have it. Contrary to popular belief, it is never a dull moment in the city of Rexburg. Back to you guys in the studio, and tune in next time for another segment of Crossroad Connections. Thanks, Lauren. What interesting things the students had to say about Rexburg. I never knew that Rexburg could be so cool. Don't you mean cold? Uh, yeah, you got me on that one. It was pretty nice weather, though, on date night. It was, and there were so many couples there. Let's go over to Tori with a recap of date night. Thanks you two in the studio. My name is Tori and I'm inside our beautiful ice center here on campus. Right now, there's not really anyone here, but last week during date night, there were around 7,000 people who joined President and Sister Meredith here in the ice center and during date night. The expectations were far exceeded as they had only expected and planned for around 3,500 or 4,000 students. But at around 6.30, right in there, President and Sister Meredith started giving advice for students that participated and came in couples as engaged people, as married people, or as people maybe even on their first date. They gave advice that dating, especially in the beginning, should be fun and easygoing and shouldn't be too focused on marriage directly. After the about 35 minutes of conversations, students retrieved from the ice center towards the MC or towards down to the gym. Most people tried to get a sweet snack because we were promised to get some ice cream and not just any ice cream, but the favorite flavors of the Meredith. The students just continued to go to the activities. There was painting, there was just dance, there was karaoke, there was bowling for free, but most importantly, there was pickleball. There were around 40 to 50 courts all around in the MC or in the ice center. And best thing, the Meredith were playing too. They were playing, I think, five games and they won two, lost two, and tied one. And from what I heard, students call it a big success and hope it will happen again. 
President and Sister Meredith hope to be able to provide more opportunities for students to meet and maybe even date some of the people they will meet. But well, that concludes all of my report. Back to you two in the studio. Wow, what an amazing event. I sure had a lot of fun with my date. Was it a blind date? Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> If you want to read more stories about Rexburg, the school, or other news, please visit Scroll's website at byuiscroll.org. Well, we have run out of time for today. Remember to tune in next time. And watch a new episode every week on Thursday. Where it will be posted to social media. Remember to share it with your friends. This has been our show today. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.